Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Chinese ebook before it's gone. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹，很高兴与大家见面。Hi, everybody. I'm Yan Ru Ma. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Chinese expressions. It's super easy and only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Chinese. Ready? Let's get started. 你好，我叫马艳茹。Hi, I'm Yan Ru Ma. 你好，我叫马艳茹。Start by saying 你好 ，which means hello. 你好。Then say 我叫 ，which means I'm called. 我叫。After this, say your name. 你好，我叫马艳茹。Yes, it's just that easy. When you introduce yourself, you might want to tell people a little more than your name. Again, it's easy. You're learning Chinese, so let's say you want to tell people you are a Chinese student. In Chinese, this is 中文学生 The first word, 中文 It's the word for the Chinese language. Chinese. Next, we have 学生 This means student. 学生 All together, it's 中文学生中文学生 Now, if you want to say I am a student, just start with the word for I we learned before. 我 then at 是 this means is 是 after this add the word for student. Do you remember it? 中文学生中文学生 put them together and you have 我是中文学生我是中文学生 Remember. Start by saying hello. Then say your name. 你好，我叫马艳茹。Follow with a little bit about you. 我是中文学生。And now you have a nice self introduction. 你好，我叫马艳茹。我是中文学生。Now it's time for Yanru's tips. When men introduce themselves, it's very common for them to shake hands. In business situations, women will do this too. In social or casual situations, however, it is common for women to simply nod or smile in order to show friendliness. Do you know how we say thank you in Chinese? Come to our next lesson, and you'll see how easy it is. 再见 See you then. Hey, 大家好，我是马艳茹。Hi, everybody. I am Yan Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Chinese. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. 准备好了吗 ？Are you ready? 我们开始吧。So let's start. There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest. It is just one word. 谢谢，谢谢，谢谢 means thanks. Another slightly more emphatic way of saying thank you is 谢谢你 Do you see what we changed? We just added 你 to the end. 你 
As you may recall, this is a word for you. It's like saying thank you. 谢谢你，谢谢你。When you really, really want to express thanks to someone, there is a different way to do it. 太谢谢了，太谢谢了。As we've seen before, 谢谢 means thanks. Here we've got new word 太 which means too, as in too much of something. 太 And another le together. This sentence is like thanks too much. 太谢谢了 How about the response? It's easy. Let me show you the most basic way to do it. 不用谢，不用谢。用 here means need. 用 Put in the 不 before it makes it negative. 不 All together, it's 不用 no need. 不用 Finally, we add 谢 which means thanks. So it means something like no need to thank. We use it just like the English "You're welcome." So when someone says 谢谢 to you, you can simply reply with 不用谢 Now it's time for English tips. Although 谢谢 is simple, it can be used in both formal and informal situations with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. But actually, in China, we don't usually say. 谢谢 to our families and our close friends. The expression, while applied, creates a feeling of distance, but it doesn't mean that we take thankfulness for granted. Instead, we will do something else in the future to show our gratitude. Do you know how to say "see you later" in Chinese? Here is a hint. I've been saying it at the end of every episode. In our next lesson, we'll go over this in detail. And talk about other ways to say goodbye and hello in Chinese. Until then, 再见。大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hey everybody, I'm Yeru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned how to show gratitude by saying 谢谢 In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in China. 准备好了吗 ？Are you ready? 我们开始吧。So let's start. The most commonly used greeting is 你好，你好。You may remember this from lesson one. 你好 means hi, hello, and how do you do? It's a slightly formal expression though, so just use it at work or similar occasions. Don't use it with your family and friends. The informal hello is sure to be familiar to you. You probably use it every day already. Hey, hey. If it sounds familiar, it's because it's just like English "Hey," but make sure to say it with the right Mandarin tone. "Hey," when you want to greet someone in the morning, you can also say "Zao a," "Zao a." It's very commonly used, but it's slightly informal. What about when we leave? What should we say? 再见 This very common expression is similar in meaning to the English "See you again." 再见 This is goodbye. Though simple, it can be used in almost all occasions. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Chinese. Let's review them all again. When meeting people for the first time or in a formal occasion, 你好 When meeting friends or family members, you can say "Hey." In the early morning, you can say "Zao a." When leaving. No matter whether it's a formal or informal situation, 再见 It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yanru's tips. As you know, there are more and more Chinese starting to learn English. This has started to affect the language. Just like how you can say "Hey" instead of "Ni hao," 
you can also say bye bye instead of 再见 So if you forget how to say 你好 and 再见 you can use the easy hey's and bye byes, and people will understand you with no problem. During the next lesson, we will learn the meaning of the phrase. 你会说英语吗 Do you already know it? I will be waiting to talk about it with you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见 Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hey, everybody. I'm Yan Ruma. Welcome to ChineseClass101.com's 三分钟汉语 the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Chinese. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. But because you are asking it in Chinese, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you are saying, even if the answer is no. Here is a common, slightly informal way to say it: 你会说英语吗？你会说英语吗 Let's break that down. You, 你 can 会 speak 说 English. 英语 question mark particle 吗 You will notice the word 你 in the beginning of the sentence. Remember that this is the way to say you. The next word 会 is like the English can. Then we have the verb 说 which means to speak. Next up is 英语 the word for English. And last we have 吗 This is used to ask a question. It works just like a question mark. Put it at the end of the sentence with a low tone. Altogether, it's 你会说英语吗 To learn how to properly use verbs like 会 please look at our Absolute Beginner series on ChineseClass101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. We are now going to make this sentence formal. First, we need to use the formal version of you, which is. 您 even if we change the word for you, we don't need to change the verb 会 Everything stays the same. 您会说英语吗？您会说英语吗 Adding 请问 the sentence becomes even more polite. It means something like "Excuse me" here. Altogether, it's 请问您会说英语吗？ The responses you will receive could be one of these three: 会 yes, 会 or 会我会说一点 yes, I can speak a little. 会我会说一点 or 我不会说 no, I don't. 我不会说 Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say the negative word 不 before the verb 会 It's just that easy. Now it's time for Yanru's tips. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can use this question with any language you need. More and more Chinese people are studying other languages, so maybe you will get lucky. Just replace 英语 with 意大利语 For Italian, Chinese for Russian, Spanish for Spanish, Chinese for German. This lesson we mentioned the expression 请问 but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Chinese. I will see you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见 
，大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hey everybody, I am Yan Ruma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase 你会说英语吗 ？Do you speak English? We mentioned the word 请问 ，which means excuse me in formal Chinese. But this isn't the only way to say. Excuse me, or I'm sorry. In Chinese, you will have to use different words in different situations. Don't worry; it will be very easy. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make a proper apology in Chinese. The expression "Qing Wen" that we learned in the last lesson is used when asking a question. For example, "Qing Wen, Tiananmen 在哪儿 Excuse me, where is Tiananmen? "Qing Wen." 天安门在哪儿 ？The first word is 请问 or excuse me. Then comes a place. In this case, 天安门 Next, we have 在 This is a word like the English "look at it." Last, we have 哪儿 which means where. All together, it means something like "Excuse me, 天安门 located where?" 请问天安门在哪儿？ An informal way to say "excuse me" is 不好意思，不好意思。不 we have seen before and means something like not. Next we have 好 which means good. Finally we have 意思 which means thought. Altogether we get something that means not good thought, but which perhaps could be translated as It is thoughtless of me. 不好意思 We can use 不好意思 when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either "excuse me" or "I'm sorry." But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is 对不起 It means "I am sorry," and can be used in both formal and informal situations. 对不起 This is so common that you should learn it all as one phrase, and not worry about breaking it down. 对不起 This is used as often as the phrase 谢谢 is to show appreciation. Now it's time for Yanro's tips. Please remember that in Chinese, if you accidentally bump into someone, we don't say "Excuse me," 请问 instead say 对不起 Are you able to count in Chinese? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Chinese from one to ten. I will be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hi, everybody. I am Yan Ruma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Chinese, including 请问 and 不好意思 In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Chinese. Yes, numbers, 数字 From one to ten, and you are going to learn them in only three minutes. 三分钟 Are you ready? Let's start. 一一二二三三四四五五六六七，七，八，八，九，九，十，十。Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 一，二，三。四
五六七八九十 Great job! What is before e? Do you know the word for zero? It's 零零 You don't have any more excuses. You can now give your friends your cell phone number in Chinese. Let's try it together. We will use the phrase 我的号码是 which means my number is. 我的号码是一三零九四二五零六三七 Can you read it by yourself? 一三零九四二五零六三七 Perfect. Now it's time for English tips. When we talk about numbers like telephone numbers, bus numbers, and so on, we pronounce one as yao. For example, a bus number one o one is pronounced yao ling yao, and you can even use. Yo, instead of e, when saying phone numbers, try it when you are in China. I'm sure that it will impress people a lot. Do you know the Chinese word for a hundred? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from eleven to a hundred in Chinese. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson, from e to 10. 再见。Hey, 大家好，我叫马燕如。Hi, everybody. I'm Yan Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from one to ten. Have you forgotten? Here, I will tell you again. 一、二、三、四。五、六、七、八、九、十。And now let's continue from eleven. 十一、十一、十二、十二、十三、十三。十四，十四，十五，十五，十六，十六，十七，十七，十八，十八，十九，十九。And finally, we have 二十二十 Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 十一十二十三十四十五十六、十七、十八、十九、二十。These numbers may seem harder to remember, but they're actually very simple. Just take the numbers you learned in the last lesson and put a 十 in front of them. So saying eleven is like saying ten one, saying twelve is like saying ten two, and so forth. Then when you get to twenty, you just say two ten. Isn't that easy? Let's not stop at twenty. Counting up to one hundred is super easy. 
Now I will give you the tense. 三十，三十，四十，四十，五十，五十，六十，六十，七十，七十。八十，八十，九十，九十，一百，一百。Memorizing these numbers is incredibly easy. Notice that all tens start with 十 and all tens end with 十 To remember what shi means, of course, it is the word for ten. So actually, all you have to remember are the numbers from one to ten. Then for one hundred, you have to learn one new word. Bai. What do you put in front of it? Yi, which is one. So it really is like saying one hundred. The last thing to learn in this lesson is. How to form compound numbers about twenty? This is super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say fifty-six in Chinese? Let's take it step by step. Fifty is 五十 and then add 六六五十六 It's done. Isn't that easy? Let's make another number. For instance, ninety-eight. Take ninety, 九十 and add eight, 八九十八 Now it's time for Yero's tips. After only two lessons, you're now able to count to one hundred in Chinese. But do you know how to say years like nineteen fifty? You might think it would be long and difficult, but actually. It's super easy. You don't have to say 十九五十 which is 1950, or 一千九百五十 which is 1950. All that you need to do is to say it number by number, like telephone numbers. So it could be one nine five zero, 一九五零 And then 年 which means year, 一九五零年 In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in China? If not, I will be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hi, everybody. I'm Yan Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class One Hundred One Dot Com. Three 分钟汉语 the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Chinese. I hope you spend some time practicing numbers because they will come in handy for this lesson. We are going to learn how to go shopping in China. Before we go. You need to know how to say how much is this. 这个多少钱？这个多少钱 ？Are you ready to go shopping in China? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is, 请问 Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. 请问这个多少钱？请问这个多少钱 ？If we want to be more specific when asking how much is this, or refer to a certain type of object, it's super easy. We just need to add the noun. For example, 帽子 a hat. 请问这个帽子多少钱 ？Excuse me, 
How much is this hat? 请问这个帽子多少钱 Another example: 杯子 Cup. 请问这个杯子多少钱 Excuse me, how much is this cup? 请问这个杯子多少钱 At this point, the shopkeeper can answer by saying. 这个 which means this, and then the cost. For example, 这个五十五元 What number is 五十五 I'm not telling you. Okay, okay. It's fifty five. It costs fifty five yuan. If you think it's too expensive, say, 能便宜点吗 This means can it be a little cheaper? It's really useful in China. But it won't work if you are in something like a large department store where bargaining isn't allowed. At this point, can you count renminbi in Chinese? We're going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer more of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I say no to an invitation politely? Chinese people are known to be very friendly and hospitable, especially when they know you're from another country or and learning Chinese. You're probably going to be invited to their house for dinners or parties that you may not want to go to. How do you turn down these invitations without being rude? It would be ideal if a simple "不用了，谢谢 ，No, thank you" would do. But the reality is, Chinese people always try to avoid using the word "no." To turn down an invitation, you usually will first apologize for not being able to make it, then give the reasons why you can't go, just like in the following conversation. 明天有空吗？来我家吃晚饭吧。Are you free tomorrow? Come have dinner at my place. 真不好意思，明天晚上我要上课，改天吧。I'm so sorry. I have to go to a class tomorrow night. Let's do it another time. In this conversation, Person B didn't say no. Instead, she explained why she couldn't go and suggested doing it another time. This is the Chinese way. You don't want to say the word can't, 不行 Or won't do, 不好 and you'll want to explain why. Many times you don't even have to give the real reason. You can use a very vague term like, 我有别的事情 I have other things to tend to, or 我有别的安排 I have other plans. So if you don't want to go to a party and don't feel like giving the real reason, you might say, 不好意思，我有别的事情去不了了 Saying no or turning down an invitation is not always easy. I believe it's not only difficult in the Chinese culture, but in many other cultures too. It's human nature that you don't want to say the word no. I hope after today's lesson, you will find a way of saying no properly and politely in Chinese. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. That's all for today. 我们今天就到这里 and I'll see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧 Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is the difference between Mandarin and Chinese? Sometimes people say they speak Chinese, and sometimes they use the word Mandarin. The two words seem almost interchangeable. Mandarin, also known as Standard Chinese, 普通话 
is the official language of mainland China and Taiwan. It's also one of the four official languages of Singapore. It's the national language that's taught in schools and is based on the standard dialect spoken in Beijing, the capital city of China. While Chinese is a more general term, it refers to a group of languages spoken by the Han people, an ethnic group of East Asia. Chinese language includes a variety of regional dialects, such as Mandarin, Cantonese, Shanghainese, etc. As a matter of fact, each town has its own dialect. When people from different areas talk to each other in their own dialect, chances are they won't be able to understand each other. For example, in Shanghainese, people greet each other by saying "no ho," whereas in Cantonese, people say "ne ho." That is why a common dialect is needed for more effective communication throughout the whole country. With a standard dialect, we can all greet each other by saying "ni hao," and nobody gets confused. Since most Chinese people speak Mandarin, when people refer to the Chinese language, they often mean Mandarin. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧 ，bye。Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are Chinese characters? Chinese characters, 汉字 are logograms. These are symbols used to represent whole words. They're used in written Chinese. In English, we use an alphabet to spell out each word. However, most letters on their own don't carry a particular meaning. In Chinese, characters come with an assigned pronunciation and their own definitions. You can combine certain characters together to make words. Most Chinese words are made of one to three characters. For example, 我 I 喜欢 like 冰淇淋 ice cream. As you may know, Chinese culture has had a great influence on all the cultures in East Asia. Chinese characters are great example. Hanzi have been brought to and modified in several other Asian languages, including Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. There are fifty thousand Chinese characters in existence, but don't be scared away. You only need three thousand to five thousand to be considered literate. It may still sound like a lot, and it does take time to memorize them, but it's not an impossible task. You can start by learning the components of characters, which are called radicals, 偏旁部首 This will make it much easier to recognize, remember, and reproduce characters. For example, the character Ming is made of two radicals, 日 and 月 sun and moon. When you put the radical sun and moon together, we get the character Ming. The most common meaning for the symbol is bright. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧 Bye. Hi everybody, Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what is pinyin? Pinyin is the standard, most commonly used phonetic system for transliterating Chinese, meaning spelling out Chinese using Roman letters. When you look up a word in a Chinese dictionary, there's always pinyin assigned to each Chinese character. It's a way to read and pronounce Chinese words through English letters. For example, Han, spelled as H-A-N, is the pinyin for the symbol Han, as in Han Zhu Ren, the Han people, an ethnic group of East Asia. Even though most Chinese people can read pinyin, it's not a substitute for the Han Zi or the Chinese characters. 
This is because pinyin is the sound system in Chinese, whereas hanzi is the writing system. Here's an example for the sentence, I can read Chinese characters in pinyin and in hanzi. 我认识汉字. Sometimes people wonder if they can only learn pinyin and ignore the actual Chinese characters. The short answer is no. Chinese books and newspapers are written with Chinese characters without the use of pinyin, unless they're written for children who are still learning to read. So for Chinese beginners, you definitely want to learn pinyin rule first. Pinyin is usually made of three parts, an initial consonant, a final consisting of one or a combination of the vowels, and a tone. There's a pinyin chart for beginners to learn and memorize the consonants and vowels. We'll get into the pronunciations of some of the most difficult pinyin sounds in the later episodes. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. Bye! Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are traditional and simplified characters in Chinese? Do I need to learn both? Traditional characters are the original Chinese characters. They were used in China before the 1950s and are still in use in many areas outside mainland China, including Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other Southeast Asian countries that speak Chinese. To increase literacy, simplified Chinese, which has less strokes, has been adopted. It was established as the official writing system by the government in mainland China. Therefore, nowadays, simplified Chinese is used in mainland China and traditional Chinese is used mostly outside mainland China. Let's look at how traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese are different from each other. Happy, 快乐, 快乐. Study, 学习, 学习. Weather, 天气, 天气. Due to the similarities between the two writing systems, someone who is familiar with one writing system may be able to decipher characters in the other. Traditional Chinese is often considered to be more authentic because it's rooted directly in the ancient forms. However, it's not necessary to learn both at the same time. Just pick one depending on where you want to visit or live. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the different tones in Chinese? Many Chinese learners find the tones quite difficult because the intonation in Chinese is very special and very different from most other languages. There are four stress tones in Chinese. Let's run through them now. First tone, yi sheng is high and steady. Ah. Second tone, er sheng, starts with a little lower pitch and goes up. Ah. Third tone, san sheng, is even lower. It first dips down, then rises. Ah. Fourth tone, si sheng, starts high, then falls sharply. Ah. In addition to the above four tones, there's a special tone called neutral tone, qing sheng. It doesn't come with any marks on top. To make the neutral tone, try to say it as in the first tone, except that you say it in a more light and short way, like ah. It's not only important, but crucial to master different tones in Chinese. There are so many words that come with the same pinyin spelling. If you don't get the tones right, 
it's very likely that your mispronounced tones will lead to misunderstandings or even embarrassment. A quick example, the pinyin and tone for Han Yu is with a fourth falling tone on Han, Han Yu. The pinyin and tone for Han Yu has a second rising tone on Han, Han Yu. They sound quite close, right? But Han Yu is Chinese language and Han Yu is actually Korean language. Don't get them mixed up and be very careful with the tones. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. 我们今天就到这里,下期再见! See you in the next episode. Bye! Hi everyone, Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I pronounce the pin initials C, Q, X, Z, Z, H? Most pin initials or consonants have very similar pronunciations to their English counterparts, but there are a few sounds that may not sound the way you'd expect. Now let's look at some of the difficult consonants to pronounce in Chinese pinyin. C sounds like tz, as in cai, vegetable or dish, tu, vinegar, and cai tuo, to get something wrong. Z sounds like z, as in han zi, Chinese characters, er zi, sun, zi ji, oneself. Q sounds like qi, but with a flat tongue and a flat mouth. For example, qi, energy, qian, money, qin qi, relatives. Another initial sound that may be different from English or your mother tongue is x. It sounds like xi, but once again, your tongue is flat here. Xi, west, xiao, small, xie xie. Thank you. And 学校, school. Now let's look at the double initial ZH. You may see it in some very common Chinese family names like Zhang, Zhou, Zheng. And in this word, Zhongguo, China. ZH sounds like the first sound in jerky, with the tip of the tongue raised against the hard palate. Try Zhan Zheng, war, Zhen Zhu, pro. 这种, this kind. As some of you may be wondering, aren't consonants or pin initials supposed to be quiet without the vibration of vocal cords? Why do Chinese teachers and friends say bo, tsi, de, fo, ge instead of ba, tsi, de, f, ge? Well, it's because when Chinese people learn pin at school, they're taught to pronounce them with a vowel to make the sounds clearer and easier to say. So Chinese may pronounce all the initials as bo, tsi, de, fo, ge, he, ji, ke, le, mo, ne, po, qi, ri, si, te, xi, zi, chi, shi, zhi. These words you've already learned? How are we going to this series? Is it interesting? 你喜欢吗? Can you pronounce all these words now? How's our series? Is it interesting? Do you like it? How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见! Bye! Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I pronounce 呃, 鱼, 鱼? 
In pinyin, there are six single vowels called finals. A, o, e, i, u, u. There are also numerous compound finals. These are made by combining two or three of the single vowels, or by adding an n, n, or er at the end of vowels. Here are some examples: ao, o, a, ye, u, wen, yan, yong, er, and so on. The e, u, y are the relatively difficult ones for non-Chinese native speakers to pronounce. First, let's look at how to say the final e accurately. E sounds like the e in the. Make sure your tongue is flat and low. A lot of Chinese learners turn to curl their tongue when saying e, which is not necessary. Let's look at some examples. 哥哥，可乐，喝。车 Unlike the vowel u, u has two little dots on top. To make this sound, try to round up your lips as much as you can. For example, 女儿绿色 There's a special rule concerning the omission of the two dots on u. When it follows the initials e, d, t, and c, it's spelled as u, but still pronounced as u. For example, u. 句子，去 ，and 必须。This rule also applies to any compound finals that starts with u. For example, 军 or 圆圈。约 sounds like the combination of u and e, as in 省略，虐待。Just like other vowels that start with u, you don't need the two dots on top when they come after e, d, t, c. In this case, we have 月亮决定缺少学习。这些规律你都学会了吗？多读、多听、多练，拼音其实并没有那么难。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下期再见。See you in the next episode. Bye. Hi everybody, Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the rule of pronunciation for 不 and 一 When studying Chinese, you've probably seen these two characters often, 不 and 一 They are very, very common, but you may notice that their tones change when they come before certain words. For example, 不 is the second rising tone in 不要 but it's the fourth falling tone in 不好 E as in number one is pronounced as 一 but in 一样 it becomes the second tone. In 一起 it's the fourth tone. Seems very confusing, right? Don't worry, there are some rules we can follow to use the correct tones. When "bu" is used alone, it's always the fourth tone, "bu." When "bu" is followed by a character with a fourth tone, it changes to the second tone, "bu." For example, "bu shi," "bu hui," "bu cuo." When "bu" is followed by a non-fourth tone, which are the first, second, and third tones, it's pronounced as the fourth tone, as in. 不知道，不行，不好。When e is used as a number, it's the first flat tone, as in 一二三四，第一，一号线。When e is followed by a fourth tone, it changes to the second tone. 一样，一定，一次。When e is followed by a non-fourth tone, becomes the fourth tone. 一般，一种，一点儿。Now you know the rules. How do you pronounce this phrase? 
Let's work backwards. The second E is followed by a fourth tone, yang. So E here should be the second rising tone, yi yang. Now the bu here is followed by a second tone, yi. So bu here should be the fourth tone, bu yi yang. Now the first E is followed by a fourth tone bu. So the first E itself should be the second tone, yi bu yi yang. So problem solved. This phrase is pronounced as yi bu yi yang. 你还有什么不懂的地方吗？请给我们留言，我们一定会给你回复。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I try to answer them. 我们下期再见 ，Bye. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: Does "ni hao" really mean "hi"? "Ni hao" and "hi" are these two greetings the same? Actually, they're not. "Ni hao" in Chinese is a very formal greeting. It's usually used when people meet for the first time. You can use it in self-introductions such as "Ni hao, 我叫玛丽 "Ni hao, 很高兴认识你 Or you can use "Ni hao" as a phrase to get a stranger's attention when you need to ask a question or favor. For example, you need to get to some place, so you may stop a passerby by saying "Ni hao, 请问一下电影院怎么走 Or when you're ordering food in a restaurant, you may say. 你好，我要一份一号套餐。Well, if 你好 is used in formal situations with people you don't really know, how do you greet people you do know? Well, it's definitely not necessary to use 你好 to your best friends when you bump into them on the street. You can simply say hi to them in English or the Chinese version hi. This is essentially a translation from English. Hi is a very popular greeting among young people, so feel free to use it as you do in English. If you haven't seen your friend for a while, you may say, "Hi, Mali, 好久不见，最近好吗？" Or you can simply say their name and then continue with some small talk. For example, it's meal time. You could say, "Mali, 吃了吗？" This is a very informal greeting, but so commonly used. After all, eating is a big deal in Chinese culture. What if you're greeting someone you know, but they're your supervisor or your senior? To make it more polite, you can address them by their title, then add a "hao" after the title. Say you see your teacher. It's considered polite to greet them by saying "mo mo lao shi hao." If the teacher's name is Li, you'll say "li lao shi hao." If you see your manager Li, you can say. 李经理好。Many times, when at work, even if the person you're greeting is the same level as you, or even at a lower level, it's still common to address them by their surname followed by the title. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下期再见，拜拜。Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I say "excuse me" in Chinese? As an English learner, I found the English phrase "excuse me" extremely useful. You can use it in many circumstances. I've been asked by my students if there is one literal translation. Or a phrase that's like it in Chinese. Unfortunately, there isn't. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to say "excuse me" in different circumstances. Scenario number one. You want to get someone's attention, 
So you can wave at them and say "ni hao." It's easy and polite. In a restaurant, you may say to a waiter, "ni hao." 点餐 If you're lost in a shopping mall and try to find the elevator, you may ask a sales lady or shopper by saying, "ni hao." 请问电梯在哪里 Scenario number two. You're passing through a big crowd. You might say, 借过一下 The literal translation for this is, "Borrow your way a little." So you're on a crowded train at rush hour, and you need to get off. Just elbow your way out and say, 借过一下，我下车 Scenario number three. You need to apologize. For example, you have to excuse yourself from a conversation to answer an important phone call, or you just sneeze really loudly. You can apologize by saying, 抱歉 Or in this case of a phone call, 抱歉，我接个电话。抱歉，我要离开一会儿，马上就回来。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 再见。Bye. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I use the final particle a、啊、in Chinese language, especially colloquial Chinese? You'll often see the particles at the end of a sentence. They usually don't have any substantive meanings themselves, but they do play a very important role in carrying out the intonation of a sentence. We call those final particles, words like ma, ba, a, o, are all particles that appear at the end of a sentence to show the emotions of the speaker. Today we'll be talking about one of the most common final particle, a. Generally speaking, a can be put at the end of a greeting, a question, an exclamation, or an imperative. It can often soften the tone. Strengthen the emotion and make the conversation more colloquial. Let's look at some examples. When you want to say "Who is it?", you can say "Shi Shei." This sounds very intense, but if you say "Shi Shei Ya,"、啊、the tone is much softer and less interpersonal. To agree with someone, you can use the word "hao," "dui," "shi," etc. Many times you will hear "hao ah," "dui ah," "shi ah" in conversations. For example, 这里的人好多啊 So many people here. 是啊，对啊，每天都这样 Yeah, it's like this every day. 今天天气真好啊 It's an exclamation. We use "ah" to emphasize the fact that the weather is really very nice. Kuaqia is an imperative. You will often hear parents say that to their kids to make them hurry up and eat their food. Here's another example of how to use a. 动物园里有很多动物，老虎啊，狮子啊，大象啊，骆驼啊，长颈鹿啊，等等。There are lots of animals in the zoo, such as tigers, lions, elephants, camels, giraffes, and so on. Ah, here is used when listing a series of things in spoken language. Generally speaking, ah is the final particle we use in colloquial language to make the speech softer, less abrupt, and more conversational. 是不是很有意思啊 ？How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. I see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见。Bye. Hi everyone, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: Does Chinese have a future tense?
Just like there's no past tense in Chinese, there's no future tense in Chinese either. You can indicate something is going to happen in the future by using the auxiliary words 会、要 and or at future time phrases like 明天 tomorrow, 下个月 next month, and so on. 会 can be translated as will or will expect to. In comparison, 要 indicates one's intention, like to be going to or to want to. Let's look at some examples. 明晚我会去看电影 Tomorrow night I will go see a movie. 你要跟我一起去吗 Do you want to go with me? 下个星期我会去上海 I will go to Shanghai next week. To make negative forms, just put a 不 in front of 会 and 要 to make it 不会不要 For example, 他不会喜欢这个地方的 She won't like this place. 我不要跟你一起去上海 I am not going to go to Shanghai with you. Some more time phrases expressing the future include 下星期三 next Wednesday, 后天 The day after tomorrow, 明年 next year, 以后 in the future. 我下星期三会给你打电话 Next Wednesday, I'll give you a call. 你明年要毕业了吗 Are you going to graduate next year? 以后我不会再来了 I will not come again in the future. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. So, we'll see you next time. See you in the next episode. Bye. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I use the adverb 就 Today we're going to show you how to use the word 就 in three ways. Here's the first usage. It's used before a verb to suggest the earliness and quickness of the action. For example, if someone says, 你就来了啊 the implied meaning is, oh. You're here already. I didn't expect you to be here so soon. 我五点就到家了 I got home at five. Here it's implied that at five is considered early. 他一分钟就学会了 He got it within one minute. Second usage. It's used to connect two actions, indicating that the second action, which is the action following 就 happens as soon as the first action is completed. Let's see some examples. 我吃完早饭就去上班了 As soon as I finished my breakfast, I went to work. 我写完报告就把电脑关了 I turned off the computer after I finished writing my report. 你一下飞机就打车回家了吗 Did you get a cab and go home as soon as you got off the plane? Third and final usage. It's also used as a conjunction word. Indicating that the second action or situation which follows "still" is the result of the first action or situation. 你喜欢吃就多吃点 Since you like it, eat more. 要是你不打电话给我，我就打电话给你 If you don't call me, then I'll call you. 既然他不喜欢唱歌，我们就不去卡拉 OK. Since she doesn't like to sing, we're not going to karaoke. Karaoke is a very popular entertainment in China. You will see lots of KTVs, which are karaoke places with private karaoke rooms of different sizes. These places usually serve food and beverages. 你喜欢卡拉 OK 吗？喜欢的话，我们现在就去。Do you like karaoke? If you do, let's go now. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们今天就到这里，下期再见。See you in the next episode. Bye.
Hi everyone, welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, why do I hear 一下 and 一点 a lot? 一下 and 一点 or 一点 as people from North China would pronounce it are used in everyday language to soften the tone in imperatives. 一下 literally means one time and 一点 literally means a little bit. Just a side note, people in North China like to use 儿化音 in their speech. 儿化音 refers to the phenomenon of adding the sound of er at the end of a word. For example, people in the South say 没事, it's okay. People from the North would say 没事. People in the South say 好玩, fun, while people in North China like to say 好玩. Let's compare some sentences with and without 一下 and 一点 你过来 versus 你过来一下 The first sentence sounds like an order, come here. The second one sounds more like a polite request, come here for a second. 你喝茶 versus 你喝一点茶 The first one sounds like a parent commanding you, drink your tea. The second one, on the other hand, is more loving like saying, have some tea, honey. Since nobody wants to sound mean when they don't have to, you'll hear verb plus 一下 or 一点 in spoken Chinese. Sometimes you can omit the 一 in 一点. You can either say, 来一点咖啡吧, let's have some coffee, or 来点咖啡吧. Or as people from North would say it with 儿化音, 来点咖啡吧. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. 我们下次再见吧! See you next time! Bye! Hi everybody! Yiru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the proper word order in a sentence? Unlike the pronunciation and writing system, sentence structure in Chinese is not as confusing and exotic. For most simple sentences, word order in Chinese is similar to that in English. Let's look at some basic SVO sentences, which are sentences with subject plus verb plus object word order. 我爱你, I love you. The subject is 我, the verb 爱, and the object 你, just like in English. 他吃面, he eats noodles. The subject is 他, the verb 吃, and the object 面. If you want to add a time phrase in a sentence, you usually put this phrase after subject. For example, 他星期二吃面 He eats noodles on Tuesdays. 我一直很爱你 I always love you. 你昨天晚上洗澡了吗? Did you take a shower last night? If you want to add a place in a sentence, like where someone does something, you also put it after subject, before the verb. Let's see a couple of examples. 他在家吃面 He eats noodles at home. 我的好朋友在伦敦工作 My good friend works in London. What if we have a time and a place at the same time? Usually, we put time after the subject, then place, then verb, or verb plus object. For example, 我的好朋友去年在伦敦工作 My good friend worked in London last year. 他们上个星期六晚上在电影院看电影 They saw a movie at a movie theater last Saturday night. Of course, there are exceptions to the rules, and many times components are omitted in different cases, but the above word order is the basic foundation for sentence structure in Chinese. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. 我们再见吧! Bye! Hi everybody! 
In Ru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What are some useful tips for someone visiting China for the first time? Visiting China is exciting and very beneficial for your Chinese learning as well. But before you go, there are some tips I would love to share with you. Tip number one: Take very good care of your valuables. Especially at train stations, bus stops, airports, busy streets, and tourist attractions, things get stolen within seconds. That's why a lot of women carry their backpacks in front of them. Tip number two: Always bring toilet paper to public restrooms. Most Chinese public restrooms don't have toilet paper or paper towels. Some may not have hand soap either, so it's good to be prepared. Tip number three: Expect people to be rude. People may stare if you have a non-Asian face, especially at places that don't usually have foreign visitors. People may cut in line. People may spit and sneeze right in front of you. People may talk loudly in public, and smokers may smoke in non-smoking areas. Just remember, these behaviors are something that Chinese are not proud of, but are still pretty common in China. Tip number four. Internet is censored in China. That means no Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Google unless you use a VPN. Tip number five: Be aware of the cleanliness of some local restaurants and street food. The food may look very good, but it's very likely you'll get sick from it. Bring some medications with you just to be safe. Tip number six: Make an attempt to speak Mandarin to Chinese people. They will love it and make your stay more enjoyable. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? China is definitely a wonderful place to visit. I didn't give you these tips to scare you away. They're just something you might want to know to make your trip more pleasant. If you have visited China before, please share your tips and experience with us. We'd love to hear your stories. I'll see you next time. 我们下次再见 Bye. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I decipher Chinese characters I don't know? As we mentioned in an early lesson, you need to know at least five thousand Hanzi to be able to read. Does that mean you have to memorize every single one of them? Not necessarily. Each character is made of components, which many times indicate. Or give hints as to what the character means. These components are called radicals or 偏旁部首 Learning some common radicals will help you recognize, remember, and reproduce characters. For example, the character Ming is made of two radicals, 日 and 月 meaning sun and moon. When you put the radical sun and moon together, we get the character Ming, the most common meaning of which is bright. A lot of times, when you see the radical 日 in a character, it often has something to do with the sun, like this character 早 meaning early, and the word 早上 meaning morning. 水 means water. This radical is its variation. When you see them in a character, it usually means the character has something to do with water. 洗 to wash, 河 river, 海 ocean. Huo means fire, and this radical is its variation. When you see huo and this radical, the character usually is related to fire or heat. Some examples are 热 hot, 烧 to burn, 灯 light, and 烟 smoke. 烟 and this character are radicals for something related to speech, such as 说 to say, 语 language, 词 word. 誓言 promise. 食 and this radical are radicals for anything related to food and drinks. For example, 饭 meal or rice. 饱 full. 饿 hungry. 餐馆 restaurant. Learning Chinese characters does take a lot of time and effort, but the result sure is rewarding. 
After you learn some basic Chinese characters, you will even find it easier to navigate in some other countries like Japan, since Hanzi is also part of their writing system. So if you've decided to learn Hanzi, I recommend that you start with radicals. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them all in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. 我们再见吧! Bye everyone! Welcome to Can Do Chinese by ChineseClass101.com. 大家好,我是李英如. Hi everyone, I'm Yinru Li. In this lesson, you will learn how to introduce yourself in Chinese. This is Mark Li, and he's on a plane to China. Zhang Zhu, a passenger sitting next to him, introduces himself by saying, Hello, my name is Zhang Zhu. Pleased to meet you. 你好,我叫朱正。很高兴认识你。Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Ready? 你好,我叫朱正。很高兴认识你。你好,我叫马克里。很高兴认识你。Once more with the English translation. 你好,我叫朱正。很高兴认识你. Hello, my name is Zheng Chu. Pleased to meet you. 你好,我叫马克里。很高兴认识你. Hello, my name is Mark Li. Pleased to meet you. Let's take a closer look at Mark's response. Do you remember how Mark Lee introduces himself? Hello, my name is Mark Lee. Pleased to meet you. First is 你好, meaning hello. 你好,你好. This is a commonly used greeting, and it is often said when meeting people for the first time. This starts with the word 你, you. 你, 你. Next is the word 好, good. 好, 好. Together, it's 你好. This phrase literally means you good, but translates as hello. 你好. Pronunciation note. When there are two third tones in a row, the first one changes to the second tone. Listen to the pronunciation again. 你好. 你好. This pronunciation change is not reflected in the pinyin, as you will still see two third tones. Before we look at how Mark introduces his name, let's look at the last part of Mark's response. 很高兴认识你. Nice to meet you, or pleased to meet you. 很高兴认识你. First is 很, very. 很, 很. This is followed by 高兴. Translating as pleased in this context. 高兴, 高兴. Next is 认识, to know. 认识, 认识. Last is the word 你, you. 你, Altogether, 很高兴认识你. Literally, very pleased to know you, but it translates as pleased to meet you. 很高兴认识你. 
when meeting someone for the first time, you'll often hear this phrase, but omitting it in favor of a simple Ni hao is often enough. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, My name is Mark Lee? First is I Next is the word which translates as to be called. Together it's Literally, I'm called, but it translates as my name is this phrase is used to introduce one's own name. Next is Mark Lee's name. Note, there is often a short pause between the first and the last name. For example, First is Mark's given name. Mark. Mark. Ma ke. Followed by his family name. Li. 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 Altogether. Wo jiao ma ke li. I am called Mark Li. Wo jiao ma ke li. When giving foreign names in Chinese, the name order follows the order of the original language. For example, Mark Lee translates to Ma Ke Li as the name order in English is given name followed by family name. For Chinese names, the order is family name followed by given names. Zhang Ju uses this order when he says Wo jiao Zhu jie. His family name Zhu is followed by his given name Zheng The pattern is jiao Name My name is Name jiao Name To use this pattern, simply replace the name placeholder with your name. Imagine you're Karen Lee. In Chinese, Kai Lun Li Kai Lun Li Kai Lun Li. Say, my name is Karen Lee. Ready? Wo Jiao Kai Lun Li. My name is Karen Lee. Wo Jiao Kai Lun Li. When introducing yourself as a Chinese learner, you might want to use just your given name. Wo Jiao. Kai Lun. My name is Karen. Wo Jiao Kai Lun. You can feel free to use the name you would like to be called. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Ni hao, wo jiao zhu jie. Hen gao xi ren shi ni. Ni hao, wo jiao zhu jie. Hen gao xi ren shi ni. Ni hao, wo jiao ma ke li. Hen gao xi ren shi ni. Ni hao, wo jiao ma ke li. Hen Gao Xing Ren Shini Ni Hao Wo Jiao Kai Lun Li Hen Gao Xing Ren Shini Ni Hao Wo Jiao Li Yin Ru Hen 
。很高兴认识你。你好我是李林。很高兴认识你。Did you notice how the last speaker uses a different sentence pattern? 我是李林。I'm Lin Li. 我是李林。First is, 我 I. 我我 Next is, 是 In this case, it's like the am in I am. 是是 Together, 我是 I am. 我是 Last is the speaker's name. Li Lin. Note the name order, last name, Li, followed by given name. Lin. All together, Li Lin. I'm Lin Li. Li Lin. This is also a common way to introduce yourself. The pattern is, Wash name. I am name. Wash Name. Do you remember my introduction at the start of the lesson? 我是李英如 I'm Inru Li. 我是李英如 My introduction follows the pattern of 我是 Name. I am Name. 我是 Name. You should be aware of this pattern. But for this lesson, we'll use the sentence pattern. 我叫 name. My name is name. 我叫 name. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say hello? 你好你好 And how to say I? 我我 Do you remember how to say Mark Lee in Chinese? 马克里，马克里。Do you remember how Mark Lee says, "My name is Mark Lee"? 我叫马克里。我叫马克里。Do you remember how to say, "Pleased to meet you"? 很高兴认识你。很高兴认识你。Do you remember how Mark Lee says, "Hello, my name is Mark Lee. Pleased to meet you." 你好。我叫马克里，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫马克里，很高兴认识你。Do you remember how Zheng Zhu says, "Hello, my name is Zheng Zhu. Pleased to meet you." 你好，我叫朱正，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫朱正，很高兴认识你。Let's practice. Imagine your 凯伦里 Respond to Zhang Zhu's self-introduction. Ready? 你好。我叫朱正，很高兴认识你
你好，我叫凯伦·李，很高兴认识你。Listen again and repeat. 你好，我叫凯伦·李，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫凯伦·李，很高兴认识你。Let's try another. Imagine your 李林。Ready? 你好，我叫朱正，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫李林，很高兴认识你。Listen again and repeat. 你好，我叫李林，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫李林，很高兴认识你。Let's try one more. Imagine your Li Yinru. Ready? 你好，我叫朱正，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫李英如，很高兴认识你。Listen again and repeat. 你好，我叫李音如，很高兴认识你。你好，我叫李音如，很高兴认识你。When speaking with your elders or people of higher social status. It's recommended to use "nin," the honorific term for you, instead of "ni." "Nin," you, in honorific speech. "Nin," "nin." So to sound more respectful, Zheng Zhu, who is younger than Mark, could say, "Nin hao, 我叫朱正，很高兴认识您。This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to introduce yourself in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head: review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes, and test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our Can Do course. Well done. Now you know how to introduce yourself in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing. And move on to the next lesson. Welcome to Can Do Chinese by ChineseClass101.com. 大家好，我是李英如。
Hi everyone, I'm In Ru Li. In this lesson, you will learn how to tell someone where you're from in Chinese. This is Mark Li, and he's on a plane to China. Zhang Ju, a passenger sitting next to him, asks him, "Where are you from?" Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Ready? Once more with the English translation. Where are you from? I'm an American. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Zheng Zhu asks, "Where are you from?" First is, "Ni." You. Ni. Ni. Next is, "Shi." Here, it's like the R in "you are." Shi. Shi. Together, Ni Shi. You are. Ni Shi. Next is Na Li. Where? Na Li. Na Li. Pronunciation note: When there are two third tones in a row, the first one changes to the second tone. Listen to the pronunciation again. Na Li. The pronunciation differs from the pinyin, where you will still see two third tones. After this, person, 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 person. together, person. literally means where person. person. Altogether, it's. Literally, you are where person, but it translates as "Where are you from?" Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, "I'm an American." First is, 我, I, 我, 我. Next is, 是, Here it's like the am in I am. 是, Together, 我是, I am. 我是, Next is, which literally means beautiful country, but it translates as the United States of America. Last is person. Together, literally means United States of America person or an American. Note, 美国人 is a noun, not an adjective. Altogether, 我是美国人 means I'm an American. 我是美国人 The pattern is, 我是 Home country, 人. I'm a noun for person of home country. 我是 home country, 人. To use this pattern, simply replace the home country placeholder with the name of your country. Imagine you're from Australia in Chinese. 澳大利亚, 澳大利亚, 澳大利亚。Say, 
I'm an Australian. Ready? I'm an Australian. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Washington. 我是英国人。我是英国人。我是武汉人。我是武汉人。Did you notice how I used a city name in place of a country name? 我是。武汉人 I'm a Wuhan person 我是武汉人 I used a city name 武汉, 武汉 in place of a country name 中国, China 武汉 Wuhan 武汉, 武汉. You can use this response to answer the question 你是哪里人? The key word in the question is 哪里? Where? In addition to countries, it can refer to any place, including cities and towns. This pattern is 我是hometown人 I'm a hometown person. 我是hometown人 you should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. 我是home country 人 I'm a noun for person of home country. 我是home country 人 Let's review the key vocabulary. 中国人 Chinese person. 中国人, 中国人, 英国人, British person. 英国人, 英国人, 加拿大人, Canadian person. 加拿大人。加拿大人。Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say United States of America? 美国美国 And how to say person? 人人 Do you remember how to say an American? 美国人美国人 And how to say I? 我, Do you remember how Mark says, I'm an American? 
，我是美国人。我是美国人。Do you remember how to say you? 你，你。And how to say where? 哪里？哪里 ？Do you remember how Zheng Zhu asks, "Where are you from?" You are from where? Do you remember how to say "British person"? 英国人，英国人 ，and how to say Chinese person？ 中国人，中国人。Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from the United Kingdom. Respond to Zheng Zhu's question. Ready? You are from where? I am from England. Listen again and repeat. I am from England. 我是英国人。Let's try another. Imagine you're Justin Jackson from Canada. Ready? 你是哪里人？我是加拿大人。Listen again and repeat. 我是加拿大人。我是加拿大人。Let's try one more. Imagine you're Yin Ru Li from China. Ready? 你是哪里人？我是中国人。Listen again and repeat. 我是中国人。我是中国人。This is the end of this lesson. Remember. These can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again. So try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done. Now you know how to say where you're from in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Well done. Now you know how to say where you're from in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson.
Welcome to Can Do Chinese by ChineseClass101.com. 大家好，我是李英如。Hi everyone, I'm Inru Li. In this lesson, you will learn how to talk about your occupation in Chinese. This is Mark Li, and he's on a plane to China. He asks the passenger sitting next to him, Zheng Zhu, "Are you a student?" 你是学生吗 ？Listen to the conversation and focus on Zheng's response. Ready? 你是学生吗？我不是学生，我是投资商。Once more with the English translation. 你是学生吗 ？Are you a student? 我不是学生，我是投资商。I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks, "Are you a student?" First is, "You." Next is, "Shi." Here, it's like the R in "Are you?" Shi, shi. After this is, 学生 student. 学生学生 Last is, 吗 This is a question marking particle. 吗吗 This particle turns the sentence into a question. Altogether, it's. Literally, you are student, but it translates as "Are you a student?" Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Now let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Zheng says, "I'm not a student. I'm an investor." First, Zheng says, "I'm not a student." First is, "I." Next is, "Here, am not," as in, "I am not." 不是，不是。This starts with 不 ，not. It's used to form a negative. 不，不。Next is 是。Here, am as in I am not. 是。Together 不是。Here, am not. 不是。Pronunciation note: When "bu" is followed by a fourth tone, its tone changes from the fourth tone to the second tone. Listen to the pronunciation again. "Bu shi," "bu shi." Altogether, "wo bu shi." I am not. "Wo bu shi." Next is. 学生 Student, 学生 Altogether, 我不是学生 I'm not a student. 我不是学生 Finally, Zheng says, 我是投资商 I'm an investor. 我是投资商 First is, 我 I. Next is, 是 Here, am as in I am. 是 After this is, 投资商 Investor. 投资商
投资商 Altogether, it's 我不是学生, 我是投资商 I'm not a student, I'm an investor. 我不是学生, 我是投资商 The pattern is 我不是 Occupation 我是 Actual occupation I'm not occupation, I'm actual occupation 我不是 Occupation 我是 Actual occupation Imagine you're Emma Liu, a student 学生 Zheng asks you if you're a teacher 老师 老师, 老师, Say, I'm not a teacher, I'm a student. Ready? I'm not a teacher, I'm a student. 我不是老师。我是学生。Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 我不是学生,我是投资商。我不是学生,我是投资商。我不是老师，我是学生。我不是老师，我是学生。我不是老师，我是工程师。我不是老师，我是工程师。我不是护士，我是医生。我不是护士，我是医生。我不是学生，我是老师。我不是学生，我是老师。不是，我是咖啡师。不是，我是咖啡师。Did you notice how the last speaker starts by simply saying 不是? No, I'm a barista. 不是,我是咖啡师。When directly responding to someone's question, it's often possible to simply answer, 不是。Here, no. 不是。You are negating the incorrect statement and can then state your actual occupation. This pattern is, 不是,我是。Occupation, no. I'm occupation. 不是,我是。Occupation. You should be aware of this pattern. But for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. 我不是。Occupation. 我是。Actual occupation. I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. 我不是。Occupation. 我是。Actual occupation. Let's review the key vocabulary. 老师 Teacher 老师 老师 工程师 Engineer 工程师 工程师 
护士 Nurse. 护士护士医生 Physician. 医生医生咖啡师 Barista. 咖啡师咖啡师。Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say investor? 投资商，投资商 ，and how to say I? 我，我。Do you remember how John says I'm an investor? <音>我是投资商。我是投资商。Do you remember how to say student? 学生，学生。Do you remember how John says I'm not a student? 我不是学生，我不是学生。And do you remember how Zheng says, "I'm not a student; I'm an investor." I'm not a student; I'm an investor. I'm not a student; I'm an investor. Question mark in particle. Ma, ma, and how to say you? Ni, ni. Do you remember how Mark Lee asks, "Are you a student?" You are a student. You are a student. Do you remember how to say teacher? Teacher. Teacher. And how to say engineer? Engineer. Engineer. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you're an engineer. Respond to Zhang's question. Ready? You are a teacher? I'm not a teacher. I'm a engineer. Listen again and repeat. 我不是老师，我是工程师。我不是老师，我是工程师。Let's try another. Imagine you're Yin Ru Li and you're a teacher. Ready? 你是学生吗？我不是学生，我是老师。Listen again and repeat. 我不是学生，我是老师
，我不是学生，我是老师。Let's try one more. Now imagine you're Emma Liu and you're a student. Ready? 你是投资商吗 Listen again and repeat. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again. So try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done. Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Well done. Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Chinese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hi, 大家好，我是殷如。Hi, everyone. I'm Yin Ru. In this lesson, we'll talk about how to make comparisons in Chinese. Comparing two things is easy and straightforward in Chinese. There is no、uh, change of word form, and there is one pattern that's always safe to use. Let's say you're comparing two places: place one and place two. Here is how you do it. Place one, B. Place two, adjective. Okay, the key word in this pattern is b. B means compared with. So the literal translation of this pattern is place one compared with place two, adjective. Or in English, you would say place one is more adjective than place two. So remember to put the two things you're comparing on each side of B, and the one who wins, the one who is more adjective, goes first, and followed by B, which is followed by、uh, place two, and directly after that, there's nothing in between. Use adjective. Okay. So again, the pattern is place one, B, place two, adjective. That's it. So let's、um, look at some examples. For example, you are comparing two Chinese cities. Okay. So in place one, we use Chengdu. Chengdu is a、um, city in the southwest part of China with all the spicy food. Okay. And place two, we use Xi'an. Xi'an is in the northwest part of China with the terracotta soldiers. So if I say Chengdu, B. Xi'an, 大 I mean, Chengdu is bigger than Xi'an. Chengdu 比 Xi'an 大 All right. That's next. Let's compare two cities outside China. Okay. So 
in the second simple sentence, place one, we use xi ya tu. Xi ya tu is Seattle, okay? And in place two, we have lun dun. Lun dun is London, okay? So, so far we know we're comparing um, Seattle with London, and Seattle apparently is more certain adjective than London. So what is that adjective? Yu shui duo. Well, technically speaking, yu shui duo is a more of an adjective phrase. Yu shui means rain water or rain, and duo means a lot. So yu shui duo means lots of rain or rainy. Okay, so Seattle be London Yu Shui Duo means Seattle is more rainy than London. Okay, Seattle be London Yu Shui Duo. Now you should understand this pattern better, and you will be more happy to know that this pattern is not only limited to two places. Okay, you can use this pattern to compare any two things by using A, B, B adjective, okay? A is more adjective than B. So there you have it, the very, a very common, useful, and fundamental pattern to make any comparisons in Chinese. Next, you're going to hear a dialogue between two friends. One is asking the other about his hometown. So while listening, I want you to pay attention to how the second person describes his hometown. Ready? 唐山小吗? 唐山比北京小 Okay, once more, a bit slower. 唐山小吗? 唐山比北京小 Okay, did you take note of how the comparison was made? Let's go over this dialogue line by line. The first line is Tangshan, apparently it's a city name. Tangshan Xiaoma is a question meaning is Tangshan small? Is Tangshan small? So while the second person first thought about it and made a thinking noise. Mm, which could translate to well. And then he made this comparison. Tangshan bi Beijing xiao, which means Tangshan is smaller than Beijing. Okay, let's just use TS for Tangshan is smaller than Beijing. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good answer because everything is relative. Is Tangshan small? Tangshan xiao ma? Um, compared with Beijing, it's small. Tangshan bi Beijing xiao. Okay, so there are, uh, when comparing two places, there are other common adjectives you can stick, you can use in our main pattern. So for example, we have long. Lung is an adjective meaning cold. So if you say, um, it means certain place is colder than the other place. So for example, let's say, Shenyang bi Beijing Lung. Shenyang. Shenyang bi. Beijing. Well, since we know the pain for Beijing, I'll skip that. Shenyang bi Beijing leng means Shenyang is colder than Beijing. Okay. Well, we can also use gu lao. Gu lao. Um, gu lao means old or ancient. In particular, um, any place or any object that's cold, that's old. So be careful not to use gu lao on people. So let's say uh, Nanjing bi bi bai gu lao. Nanjing. Nanjing bi di bai is Dubai. Di bai. So 
南京 sorry, 南京比迪拜古老 means Nanjing is older than Dubai. Okay, next one, the next next adjective is 拥挤拥挤 means crowded. 拥挤 How about 上海比北京拥挤啊、uh, Even though both cities are pretty crowded. But Shanghai wins this one, so let's put Shanghai first. Shanghai, B again, Beijing. Shanghai, B Beijing, Yongji. Shanghai is more crowded than Beijing. Okay. Uh, next is the one we know that's in our dialogue. 小 means small. So 什么地方比什么地方小 means a、uh, certain place is smaller than the other place. Like 唐山比北京小。比北京小 and the opposite of 小 is 大 okay 大 means big. So、um, we talked about 成都比西安大 Chengdu is bigger than 西安 So 成都比西安大 And the last one is also what we we mentioned before. 雨水多 means Rainy, 西雅图比伦敦雨水多。西雅图比伦敦雨水多。All right, let's go over our adjectives one more time. 什么比什么冷，冷 cold, and 古老 old or ancient. 古老，拥挤 ，crowded， 拥挤，小 ，small， 小，大 ，big， 大 ，and， 雨水多 ，rainy。Now it's time to review. Do you remember how to say small? Xiao, Do you remember how to say Beijing? Beijing, Beijing. And how to say Tangshan? Tangshan, Tangshan. Now, do you remember how to say Tangshan is smaller than Beijing? Tangshan 比北京小。Tangshan 比北京小。Do you remember how to say big? And how to say cold? Long, long. Do you remember how to say rainy? Rainy, rainy. Do you remember how to say old? 古老，古老。And do you remember how to say crowded? Crowded, crowded. Well done. In this lesson, you've learned how to make basic comparisons in Chinese. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. I'm Yin Ru, and I'll see you again on ChineseClass101.com. 再见。Hi everyone. I'm Yun. 大家好，我是云。Welcome to another Chinese whiteboard lesson. 
In this lesson, you'll learn how to say where you're from in Chinese. You'll also learn about some major Chinese cities and fun facts about them. Let's get started. Okay, there are six Chinese cities in this list. Among them, you probably have heard about Beijing and Shanghai. Beijing, Beijing, Beijing. Beijing is the capital of China. It's all about history and culture, with its famous landmarks like the Forbidden City, the Summer Palace, the Great Wall, etc. And Shanghai, Shanghai, Shanghai. Shanghai has a population of 26 million, which makes it the biggest city in China. It is also the largest commercial and financial center in China. Another major city is Guangzhou. 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 Guangzhou is situated in the southern part of China. As one of China's oldest and largest cities, Guangzhou has been a major trading port for centuries. It's also famous for its Zao Cha culture, where locals gather together in the early morning for a traditional breakfast. Next, we have Nanjing, Nanjing, Nanjing. Nanjing is pretty close to Shanghai. It used to be the capital of China. That's why it ends with Jing, Jing, which means capital, just like Jing in Beijing. Chengdu, Chengdu, Chengdu. Chengdu is famous for its giant pandas, and it's also my favorite city in China. Um, a lot of young people like its laid-back lifestyle, and it's also the capital of Sichuan province, which is here. Sichuan, Sichuan, Sichuan. Sichuan is a province, not a city. And as we said, Chengdu is the capital city of Sichuan province. We also have some country names. Mei Guo, Mei Guo, Mei Guo, USA. Ying Guo, Ying Guo, Ying Guo, England. Fa Guo, Fa Guo, Fa Guo. France, 日本, 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 Japan. Let's look at the dialogue. Pay attention to how the speaker tells where she's from, and take note if she's from one of the five largest Chinese cities that we just looked at. 你是哪里人? Where are you from? 我是北京人. I'm from Beijing. Did you hear where the second speaker is from? Yes, she's from the capital city, or 首都, of China, Beijing. Beijing. Let's imagine you're meeting a new friend who is from Nanjing. How would this person from Nanjing introduce where he's from? Right, he'd say, 我是南京人. 我是南京人. I'm from Nanjing. And let's imagine you're meeting a friend who is from Shanghai. How would he say? Right, he would say, 我是上海人. 我是上海人. I am from Shanghai. And another friend who is from Guangzhou, he would say, 我是广州人. 我是广州人. I am from Guangzhou. Can you 
Can you now recognize the pattern to introduce where you're from? The pattern is 我是 place 人 我是 place 人 This literally translates as I am place person Like here, I am a Beijing person a common mistake for Chinese learners when using this pattern is that they forget to add person or ren at the end. But that would make a totally different sentence. If you say, 我是北京, that would mean you are Beijing, which is obviously not true. Also, note that this pattern can be applied to not just cities, but also countries and even states or provinces, as we would call them in China. For example, Sichuan is a province. It's known for its spicy food. You may have seen Sichuan as part of a dish name in Chinese restaurants. So someone who's from a small town that nobody knows may introduce where they're from by using a more well-known place name, such as Sichuan. So in this case, he would say, 我是四川人. 我是四川人. I am from Sichuan. Country names also fit in this pattern. For example, 我是法国人. I am French. 我是法国人. So it literally translates into I am a French person. So I am French. And also, 我是日本人. Literally translates into I am a Japan person. So, I am Japanese. 我是日本人. Do you remember how to say Beijing? Beijing. Beijing. And how to say person? 人. Ren. Do you remember how to say, I'm a Beijing person? 我是北京人. 我是北京人. And how to say, Shanghai? Shanghai. Shanghai. Do you remember how to say Guangzhou? Guangzhou. Guangzhou. And how to say Nanjing? Nanjing. Nanjing. Do you remember how to say Chengdu? Chengdu. Chengdu. And how to say USA? Mei Guo. Mei Guo. Do you remember how to say England? Ying Guo. Ying Guo. And how to say France? 法国, 法国. Do you remember how to say Japan? 日本, 日本. And how to say Sichuan? Sichuan, Sichuan. In this lesson, you learn how to say where you're from in Chinese. Thanks for watching. I'm Yun, and I'll see you on ChineseClass101.com. 再见! Hi everyone, I'm Yun. Hi, 大家好,我是云。Welcome to the Chinese Whiteboard Lessons. 
In this lesson, you'll learn how to use the linking particle shi. Let's get started. Imagine you're chatting with someone and you want to let them know you're American. How do you do that in Chinese? 我是美国人 我 means I and 美国人 means American. Now link them together with the particle here 是 是, 我是美国人, 我是美国人, I am American. Now let's look at the sentence pattern. Here, you start with a subject, then add 是, 是, and end the sentence with a noun. So, 是 here is like the glue that holds your sentences together. It can be used to describe your nationality, gender, occupation, etc. You may wonder, does that mean 是 equals to be in English? Well, the answer is yes and no. Notice that in this pattern, we use nouns after 是. And in this case, 是 is used like the English verb to be, but it's not always a perfect match. For example, you can just swap in an adjective here. If you want to say, he is smart, you can't use 是 here. But for now, let's just remember to connect the subject and noun with 是. Moving on to the dialogue. When I read, I want you to pay attention to 是. Find what is the subject and what is the noun, and see how it's used in the dialogue. 你好,我叫朱正,很高兴认识你. Hello, my name is Zheng Zhu, pleased to meet you. 你好,我叫马克里,很高兴认识你. Hello, my name is Mark Lee, pleased to meet you. 你是哪里人? Where are you from? 我是美国人. I am an American. Now let's look at some speaking examples. 我是英国人. 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 I'm British. 我的电话号码是 123-4567-8910 我的电话号码是 123-4567-8910 My phone number is 123-4567-8910 我是学生 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 I'm a student 我是马克里。我是马克里。我是马克里. I'm Mark Lee. Notice here, this, this, and this, these three examples, the subject is 我. However, this one here, the subject is a bit long. 我的电话号码。我的电话号码, my phone number. And all these examples, after 是, 英国人, 学生, 马克里, they're all nouns. As we mentioned earlier, in this pattern, we only use nouns after 是. So pay attention that you can use, you can only use nouns here. Do you remember how to say I? Wo And how to say American? Mei Guo Ren. 
Do you remember how to say I am American? And how to say I am a student? Do you remember how to say British? And how to say I am British? In this lesson, you learned how to use the linking particle 是 in Chinese. Thanks for watching. I'm Yun, and I will see you on ChineseClass101.com. 再见! I'm Yun. Hi, 大家好,我是云. Welcome to the Chinese whiteboard lessons. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use the negation adverb 不. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at this sentence. 我不是学生. 我不是学生. So literally, it translated into I, not be, student. So it means I'm not a student. Here, 我 means I. 学生 means student. So if you want to say, I am a student, it's 我是学生. But if you want to say, I'm not a student, very simple, you just add 不 in front of a verb. In this case, 是, 不是. Not be. 我不是. I am not. 我不是学生. I'm not a student. So the pattern is very simple. Just add 不 in front of a verb. Now let's learn the pronunciation of 不. Notice that 不 can be pronounced in two different ways. 不 and 不. When it's by itself, or comes before a first, second, or third tone, then it's pronounced as 不. However, if it comes before a fourth tone, it switches to the second tone. 不, 不. I know it seems like a lot, but don't worry. Just remember a few common examples for now. As your vocabulary expands, you'll find yourself picking up on it more effortlessly. We'll co cover more examples later to help you get the hang of it. Let's look at the dialogue. When I read, I want you to pay attention to the negation adverb 不. Find where the adverb is and see how it's used in the dialogue. 你是学生吗? 你是学生吗? Are you a student? 我不是学生。我是老师。我不是学生。我是老师. I'm not a student, I'm a teacher. Now let's look at some speaking examples. 我不是老师。我不是老师。I'm not a teacher. 我不是护士。我不是护士。I'm not a nurse. 我不去学校。我不去学校。I don't go to school. 我不喝咖啡。我不喝咖啡。I don't drink coffee. 他不喜欢运动。Not 
不喜欢运动 He doesn't like sports. So notice the first three examples here. 不 is pronounced as the second tone. 不不 because here 是 and 去 they are both the fourth tone. That's why 不 is pronounced as the second. 不不是不去 and the last two examples here. 不喝不喜欢不 here is pronounced as the fourth tone. 不 because 喝 is the first tone, and 喜 is the third tone. So 不 stays as the fourth tone. 不不喝不喜欢 And I wanted to to try to find where the verb are. The first one is 是 Second one 是 Here the verb is 去 Go. Here the verb is 喝 Drink. And the last one 喜欢 Like. Do you remember how to say drink? 喝喝 And how to say not? 不不 Do you remember how to say I don't drink? 我不喝，我不喝。And how to say I don't drink coffee? 我不喝咖啡，我不喝咖啡。Do you remember how to say go? 去，去。And how to say not go? 不去，不去。Do you remember how to say I don't go to school? 我不去学校。我不去学校。Do you remember how to say like? 喜欢，喜欢。And how to say not like? 不喜欢，不喜欢。Do you remember how to say he doesn't like sports? 他不喜欢运动。他不喜欢运动。In this lesson, you learn how to use the negation adverb 不 in Chinese. Thanks for watching. I'm Yun, and I will see you on ChineseClass101.com. 再见。Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this series, you will learn everything you need to know to get started learning Chinese. That's right, and we are here to help guide you on your journey. In this lesson, you'll learn the reasons why you should start learning Chinese and how to get started. Chinese is a super language with many dialects. Cantonese, for instance, is a dialect of Chinese. In mainland China, in order for people speaking different dialects to understand and communicate with each other, a standard and official language was created based on Beijing dialect. It's called Mandarin Chinese. 普通话 This literally means the common dialect. Mandarin Chinese is so widely spoken that it's not only in China. Other countries like Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia use Mandarin as an everyday language as well. 
Statistics show that more than 14% of the world population are native Mandarin speakers, which makes Mandarin the most spoken native language in the world. Being able to speak Mandarin Chinese means you will be able to communicate with one-sixth of the people on this planet. Which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Who knows? One of them could be your future husband or wife. Besides the large Chinese-speaking population, China is also one of the oldest civilizations in the world, with over 5,000 years of rich history. Did you know that the Terracotta Army, which is a collection of terracotta sculptures, was built in 209 BCE? They were buried upon the death of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, in order to protect him in his afterlife. Today, you can visit them in Xi'an province of China. Being able to speak Chinese will definitely help you understand the story behind this magnificent world heritage. Chinese culture has had a huge influence on cultures throughout Asia. In terms of language, Chinese language shaped many other languages, similar to the way Latin shaped the languages of Europe. Chinese characters have been introduced to most of the Asian languages, such as Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, and Thai. Even today, kanji, or Chinese characters, is still part of the Japanese writing system. By learning Chinese, you will be able to understand and appreciate different aspects of ancient Chinese and Asian cultures, such as calligraphy, paintings, poetry, music, and architecture. This makes touring around Asia all the easier. Last but not least, China is the second largest economy in the world. Since China opened its doors to the West in the late 70s, the Chinese government has been working on bringing foreign investment and economic cooperation to the country. This creates many employment opportunities for foreigners to work in China. China is also one of the fastest growing nations as well. The future of China is promising. That's why many companies now do business with China, and why many movies that in the future show China as a superpower and a global influencer. Learning Chinese will allow you to have a leg up on the future. This can mean big things for your career and might help you land your dream job. Even if you don't work and live in China, being able to speak Chinese will give you an edge when competing for employment opportunities in your own country. Chinese is often called one of the most difficult languages in the world. It is certainly a challenge. But it's not as difficult as you might think. Chinese grammar is actually pretty easy. It has the same sentence order as English. Plus, there are no noun plural forms and verb tenses to memorize. Even the four tones are not that difficult. Pay attention when native speakers are talking and mimic their pronunciation. You will definitely get the hang of it. Plus, many Chinese people, especially the younger Chinese, speak some English. They're always so eager to help you. You'll find a lot of teachers once you let people know you're studying Chinese. Most importantly, we're here to offer you any help you might need while learning Chinese. Let's get started by looking at a couple of common Chinese phrases. To express your gratitude, you say xie xie. Xie xie. You can use this phrase in any occasion and under any circumstances. To make your gratitude more heartfelt, you can add 你, which means you. 谢谢你. It makes your thank you sound more personal and polite. So to say thanks or thank you, you can say 谢谢 or 谢谢你. Let's look at another well-known phrase. 我爱你. Do you know what that means? 我 means I. I means love. 你 means you. So 我爱你 means I love you. Exactly the same order as in English. If the Chinese characters or 汉字 look daunting, don't worry. There's a romanization system for all the Chinese characters in Mandarin called pinyin. With the help of pinyin, you should be able to pronounce any Chinese words you see, no problem. We'll get into that in a later episode of this series. Well done! Now you know how to say thank you 谢谢 or 谢谢你 in Chinese. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. China has a colorful history with many things for you to see and learn. And to say thank you in Chinese, it's 谢谢. In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Chinese pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds and tones of Chinese. So be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye.
Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Chinese pronunciation. We'll give you a brief introduction to the Chinese romanization system, demonstrate a few difficult sounds, and then talk about tones in Chinese pronunciation. Pinyin is a system that represents Mandarin Chinese by using the Roman alphabet. It's now the most common way to romanize Mandarin Chinese. It's the foundation for Chinese pronunciation. Learning pinyin will benefit you in many ways. It shows you the proper way to pronounce a word. It also allows you to pronounce a word you've never seen. And if you'd like to type in Chinese on your phone or computer, pinyin input is the easiest and most popular way. A complete syllable in pinyin is usually made of initials, which are consonants, and finals, which are vowels, and lastly, a tone mark. Sometimes, though, a vowel by itself can make a syllable too. There are 20 consonant letters in Mandarin or Pinyin. Almost all the same consonant letters as in English, except for the letter V. Bo, pa, ma, fa, da, ta, na, la, ge, ka, ha, and so on. And there are combinations of consonants that are initial sounds as well. But don't worry, there are only three of these. Zhi, shi, shi. And then we have vowels. There are six single vowels in Mandarin Chinese. A, o, e, i, u, yu. By combining these single vowels with each other, or by combining them with n, ng, or r, we can make many compound vowels, such as ya, o, e, we, er, an, yun, ang, yan, wan, yong. It may look like a lot to remember. The trick is to memorize the ones that sound different from English or your native language. This will be emphasized in the next part of the lesson, so stick around. Some sounds in Chinese don't sound like their Roman letters. We'll show you how they're pronounced in Chinese. First, let's look at some single vowel sounds. Uh, sounds like the U in the English but only longer. Remember not to curl your tongue when there is no R around. Chua, he. The only exception is when it comes after Y. Then it sounds more like e, eh, as in red. Yeah, yeah. The E sound is like the double E in the English C. E, C. When it comes after A, C, Ch, R, S, Sh, or J sound, it's more like a short E sound, as in lip. J, S, S, S. The U sound is like the French U. Your lips should be round and pouting. Lu, nu. U and U are different sounds, but when U comes after G, Chi, Xi, E, it makes the same sound as U. Zhu zi, Xu, Yu mi. Now let's look at some compound vowel sounds. For all the compound sounds, you just need to make the first single vowel sound and then slide into the next single vowel. For example, the yu sound. Try to make the yu sound. Then slide to e, yu, xu. To make the one sound, combine wu with an, suan, yuan quan. Yan sounds like the word yan, the Japanese currency, xian. Consonants are pretty easy in Chinese. Just pay attention to the next couple of sounds. G is like the J in Jeep, but press your flat tongue tightly against the back of your upper teeth. 姐姐，家人。Chi is like the CH in cheap, but again with a flatter tongue and a stronger puff of breath. 请，气球。She. Is like the sh in sheep. Again, you lay your tongue flatter and extend the two sides of your mouth wider. 小，新鲜。Now you know all the sounds in pinyin. A total of over 400 sounds. What an accomplishment! Congratulations. Now let's move on to another important but also challenging part in Chinese pronunciation: tones. 
Every syllable in Chinese pronunciation is stressed with one of the four different tones. The first tone is steady with a high pitch. Ah. The second tone starts with a middle pitch, then rises quickly. Ah. The third tone goes down from a low pitch, then rises to the middle of the pitch range. Ah. The fourth tone falls sharply and quickly from a high pitch. Ah. Besides the four stressed tones, there's a neutral tone. This is very light, weak, and short. Pay attention to the second syllables of the next examples. 爸爸, 椅子, 好吗? Let's recap what we've learned by breaking down a word in pinyin. The pronunciation for the famous city Shanghai is... Shanghai. The first syllable here is made of an initial... 是, and a final... 昂, and a fourth falling tone. 上. The second syllable is made of an initial he, and a final I, and a third falling then rising tone. Hai, Shanghai. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, we introduced you to pinyin, the romanization method to help you get started learning Chinese. We also covered some of the unique and difficult sounds of Chinese and introduced you to the four tones in Chinese. We've covered only the basics of Chinese pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out the entire course we created named The Ultimate Guide to Chinese Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the Chinese language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your Chinese pronunciation. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Chinese grammar, where you'll learn about Chinese word order and how to build basic phrases in Chinese. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Chinese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. Let's break down the English sentence, I ate an apple. We can see that the subject, I, is presented first followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence. I ate an apple in Chinese. 我吃了一个苹果. If we break down this sentence, we will have 我, I, which is a subject, 吃了, which means ate or have eaten, a verb. Next. The object, 一个苹果, an apple. So the order is subject plus verb plus object, or SVO for short. This is exactly the same order as in English. Let's try another basic sentence. I like Chinese. I is 我, like is 喜欢. Chinese is 中文, so we put the subject first, then the verb. And then the object. All together, we have 我喜欢中文. Now you know the word order in Chinese. Let's try to add more components to basic words to make longer sentences. Adding a time phrase in Chinese sentences is a little different than in English. In English, we put the when phrase in the last part of the sentence. For example, I eat an apple every day. In Chinese, we put the time phrase after the subject, so we need to put every day after I. So we have 我, I, 每天, every day, 吃, eat, 一个苹果, an apple. Subject plus time phrase plus verb plus object. 我每天吃一个苹果。我的姐姐明天去美国。我的 my, 姐姐, older sister, 明天, tomorrow, 去, go to, 美国, the United States. My older sister is going to the U.S. tomorrow. 我的姐姐明天去美国. To add places, put them after the time phrases. 
For example, I eat an apple every day at home. In Chinese, that's. 我每天在家吃一个苹果。在家 means at home. So it's I every day at home eat an apple. 我每天在家吃一个苹果。Let's try another one. I was born in the U.S. in 1990. Remember, subject, time, place, and then verb. 我一九九零年在美国出生。我一九九零年在美国出生。To form negative sentences, there are two ways for two circumstances. You can use 不 or 没有 We use 不 in present tense sentences, or when you don't want to do something. 我不喜欢中文 I don't like Chinese. 我不去 I'm not going. 我不吃 I don't want to eat. We use 没有 in past tense, meaning didn't or haven't done something. 我没有吃苹果。I didn't eat the apple. 我的姐姐昨天没有去美国。My older sister didn't go to the U.S. yesterday. To form yes or no questions in Chinese, it can't be easier. Just add a question marker, m, at the end of a statement. You like Chinese is. 你喜欢中文。To make it, do you like Chinese? We simply put m at the end. 你喜欢中文吗 Let's make 你每天在家吃一个苹果 a yes or no question. 你每天在家吃一个苹果吗 Now you know how to ask questions with a yes or no answer. But how do you ask questions using question words such as what, when, where, how, why, and which? Let's put the above questions words into two groups. We put what, which, and where after the verb. It's like replacing the object with a question word. For example, what do you like? 你喜欢什么？你 you 喜欢 like 什么 what? Which one do you like? 你喜欢哪个？你 you 喜欢 like 哪个 ？Which one? Where do you like? 你喜欢哪里？你 ，you 喜欢 like 哪里 ？Where? And for the rest of the question words, we put them before the verb, so it's subject, question word, verb, object. In some cases, you can omit the object to make the sentence concise. When are you going? 你什么时候去？你 ，you 什么时候 ？One 去。Go. Why are you going to the U.S.? 你为什么去美国？你 you 为什么 ？Why 去 go to 美国 the United States? How are you going to go? 你怎么去？你 you 怎么 ？How 去 go? If we have a sentence with both a time phrase and a question word, which should go first? Just remember, question words are always stuck with verbs. So in this case, it would be subject, time phrase, question word, then verb. 你明天怎么去？你 you 明天 tomorrow 怎么 how 去 go How are you going to go tomorrow? Basically, questions have the same order as SVO statements. Just remember to stick the right question words in the right places, and don't forget the question mark. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Chinese uses the exact same S V O word order as English. From this, you learned how to form affirmative and negative sentences, and finally, you learned how to convert an affirmative sentence into a question. We've covered only the very basics of Chinese grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Chinese in Three Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Chinese grammar, and each lesson is only three minutes long. In the next lesson, we're going to introduce you to Chinese writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye.
Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Chinese writing. Unlike English, which is an alphabetic language, Chinese is written with characters. These represent both sound and meaning. Each hanzi has one syllable. One or more syllables make up a word. So in Chinese, a word can be made up of one or more hanzi. For example, the word hanzi is made of two syllables. The first one, han, means Chinese. All the han people which is a majority ethnic group in China. The second syllable, zi, means word. So Han and zi together means Chinese characters. Although there are more than 50,000 characters in Chinese, you only need to know two to 3,000 to be considered literate. Still, memorizing 3,000 Chinese characters sounds like a huge challenge, but it's actually easier than you may think. All Chinese characters are made up of smaller components that are used over and over again in other characters. This means that by learning just one component, you can effectively learn multiple characters at the same time. Let's look at this aspect in more detail. Most Chinese characters are pictophonetic. They consist of a radical and a phonetic element. These are the technical terms for the components we just talked about. The radical often suggests the meaning of a character. The phonetic part indicates the original pronunciation, which may or may not be the modern pronunciation. For example, let's look at the character fan, rice or meal. Its radical is, which indicates that this word is related to food or eating. The second part, fan, is a phonetic element. It suggests that its pronunciation is close to the pronunciation of the character Fan, meaning opposite. To be able to recognize and write Chinese characters, you should know the basic radicals. Now we'll give you a few of the most commonly used radicals. Ren or its variation means man or person. It's present in words like ni, you, ta, he, zhong, the masses. Nu meaning woman. It's in words like Ma, mom, jie, older sister, gu niang, girl. Xin, or its variation, means heart. Xiang, to think. Yi, to recall. Shou, or its variation, means hand. It usually appears when the word describes an action using hands, such as da to hit, la, to pull, tui, to push, na, to grab. Ko means mouth. Characters with this radical often involve using your mouth, such as chi, to eat, chang, to sing, tun, to swallow. Mu means eye, can, to look or see, shui, to sleep. Yan or its variation means speech. Shuo to speak or say. Qing please or to invite. Xie to thank. Shui or its variation means water. Hai ocean. He river. Xi to wash. Huo or its variation means fire. For example, shao to burn. Dung, light, re, hot. Yi, or its variation, means clothing. Chen shan, shirt. Dai zi, bag. Most radicals are at the left or bottom of a character. By identifying radicals, it should be much easier to decode the meaning of new characters. For the phonetic elements, it takes time and effort to memorize their pronunciations. The more you study them, the easier it will be. When writing in Chinese, it's important to know the order of strokes. Knowing the number of strokes is also important when you look up a word in a radical-based dictionary. Some characters can have many strokes, and they can get very complex. If they're not written in the correct order, some characters may even be unreadable. So learning the proper stroke order is quite important. Remember, 
right from left to right. Chuan River. Ren Person. From top to bottom. San Three. Horizontal then vertical. Shi Ten. Tu Soil. Outside then inside. Yue Moon. Yong to use. Inside then close. Hui to return. Tian farmland. The middle, then the sides. Xiao, small. Shui, water. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, we introduced you to the basics of Chinese characters. You also learned that Chinese characters are comprised of radicals. Finally, you learned some of the most common stroke patterns when writing Hanzi. In the next lesson, you'll be entering Chinese boot camp, where you'll learn useful beginner phrases to get you speaking Chinese right away. We'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Chinese words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you are repeating the words out loud after me. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? 谢谢, it means thank you. 谢谢. Keep repeating after Ray until you get it. 谢谢. Your turn. 谢谢. 谢谢. In lesson two, we mentioned the pronunciation of the consonant. She. It sounds like the SH in English, only with flatter lips. Then we have the compound vowels. Yeah. The tone in the first syllable is the fourth falling tone. Xie. And the second syllable is the neutral tone. Xie. Altogether, xie xie. You can see the radical in this character xie is... This indicates that the meaning of this character has something to do with speech. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to apologize or to excuse yourself. 对不起, which means, I'm sorry. This is a formal way to apologize for when you did something wrong. Repeat after Ray. 对不起. 对不起. But if you want to interrupt someone and ask a question, we don't often use this phrase. Instead, we use... 请问 before a question. It literally means, may I please ask? 请问. If you want to get the waiter or waitress's attention, in English, you might say, excuse me. But in Chinese, you just need to raise your hand and your voice and say, 服务员. Which means waiter or waitress. 服务员. Don't worry, it won't sound rude. Everyone in China does it. It's the most common way to get a waiter's attention in China. Now you can say, thank you very much, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Chinese. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. 在哪里? 在 means at. 哪里 means where. So the pattern is something or location plus 在哪里. For example, if you want to ask, where is the bathroom? 洗手间在哪里? 
Or for the subway station, you say, 地铁站在哪里 To sound more polite, you can add, "May I please ask?" before the sentence. We mentioned this phrase earlier in this lesson. 请问洗手间在哪里？请问地铁站在哪里？ So altogether, the polite way to ask where something is is, 请问在哪里 If you know the person you're talking to well, you can simply say, 在哪里 Your turn. 在哪里请问在哪里 Okay, now let's teach you some vocabulary to use in the sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. 洗手间 Bathroom. 洗手间，洗手间在哪里 ？Next we have. 地铁站 Subway station. 地铁站，地铁站在哪里 ？Next. 超市 Supermarket or convenience store. 超市，超市在哪里 ？Next. 我的座位 My seat. 我的座位，我的座位在哪里 ？You can ask where anything is simply by saying the place or location and 在哪里 ？To ask where something is in Chinese. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Chinese. And in this series, we introduce you to the basics of Chinese pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Ray and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Chinese from a native Chinese perspective. The best way to learn Chinese, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Chinese videos. That's because we often use expressions in daily conversation that aren't necessarily introduced in grammar textbooks. Even though Mandarin is a common language in China, men and women. Elderly people and children have their own ways of speaking. This means they have their own vocabulary and tones. For example, women use "na" at the end of their statements a lot, with the purpose of softening their tones. But if men use that, they will sound very feminine. Make sure you mimic the right person. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at Chinese Class 101, will ensure that you are learning. Real, applicable Chinese in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Chinese, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Chinese fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Ultimate Guide to Chinese Pronunciation series, where we teach you all the sounds of the Chinese language. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Chinese, and we'll see you in another video. Bye. Bye. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, 
Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello, guys! Welcome to Top 25 Chinese Phrases. Hi! My name is Bao Yuting. It's the first time to see you there. Nice to meet you. Ni hao. Hello. Ni hao, the most common way. First time. Ni hao, ni hao, ting do do guan zhao. The more casual way to say ni hao is hi. And just like this, you meet your friends, you can say, hey, chu na ra. Dui bu qi. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Could you tell me where is the toilet? Oh, 对不起,请问一下厕所在哪里? 谢谢, thank you. You like my video? Ah, 谢谢! 早安, good morning. Mm, mm, 早安, 早上好. 早, 晚安, good night. Mm, 晚安, good night. Phew, 太好了, great. We will go into Hawaii for this holiday. Yeah! 太好了! Great! 哪有? That's not true. Yu Ting, you are so beautiful. <laughs> 哪有? 哪有? I'm flattered. Mm. But in my heart, <laughs> you are right, I'm beautiful. <laughs> 加油! Go for it! When your friends raising for a competition, you can say, 加油, 加油, go for it, go for it, go, go, go. 放心, don't worry. Um, routine, today there is nobody can cook for our dinner. Don't worry, I've got it. 放心吧, 包在我身上. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know how to cook. 干嘛呢? What's up? Hey, 老王,干嘛呢? 一会儿去喝茶呀? Hmm? What's up? You, you say you want to drink a tea with me? Hmm? Okay. 好吃! Delicious! My favorite food, baking duck. Do you like baking kaoya? <laughs> baking duck. Haha! <laughs> 好吃! Hey, yummy, delicious! 随便你, up to you. 今晚我请客, I will treat you dinner. Uh, what you eat is up to you. Yeah. 放弃, give up. <sighs> Please don't give up your dream forever. 请千万不要放弃你的梦想. Yeah, you can do it. 好的, okay. Actually, in my generation, all the friends will say okay instead of "hada," So you can just use okay. But like this. Could you come here, please? Hada, Okay. Could you please help me pass this water? Hada, Okay. 没什么, not much. And also for this, for this, and you can also use 没事的. It's like, oh, thank you so much for your help. 没事的, it doesn't matter, it's not that much. And also, like this, Oh, so sorry, I'm late again. Ah, 没事的, it's not that much. 我们走吧, let's go! When you sit on the restaurant and you just finish it, and you can say that to your friends, 我们走吧, let's go! 怎么样, how about it? Ah, it's beautiful. 怎么样,你喜欢吗? How about it? You like it? 我想, I want. Oh, my watch is broken. I want to buy a new one. 我想买一块新表。没完没了, there is no end to this. I'm my mother now. 哎呀, 
you must study hard, and then you can go to the good college. Then you can marry a good man. Then you can have a beautiful baby. Then your baby can go to the good college, and your baby can have a, a good marriage, and your baby can have a good career. <laughs> 我妈妈说起来没完没了。我的妈呀 ！Oh my god! For my generation, the most common way is to say "Oh my god." It, hmm, it's messy. Have you tried? 我的妈呀！好辣呀！哎 ，Oh my god! It's so spicy. Ambulance! 救护车！好有趣。It's so interesting. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Ah, it's so interesting. 好有趣 Come here, come here. 肚子饿了 I'm hungry. Oh, 怎么还不下课呀？肚子饿了 I'm so hungry. 好撑 I'm so stuffed. Ah,、oh, I'm so stuffed. 好撑呀，吃太多了 Ah.、Oh. Just kidding. Hehehe. <laughs> 我喜欢 I like it. Oh, 我喜欢一醒来有你在身旁 Oh, this sounds is so romantic. 再见 Bye. Goodbye. But most carefully to say is 回见回见了您嘞 Okay, that's all. We did the top twenty-five Chinese phrases today. What's our favorite phrases? My favorite phrases. 好吃，嘿嘿嘿。Trust me, it's very common and very very useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. You must cut there. <laughs>、Want to finally learn Chinese the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top ten ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on ChineseClass101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than thirty seconds, and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson, and the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four. Use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned, and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, 
review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the Check Answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Chinese, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to ChineseClass101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you feeling confident as a beginner level language learner? Are you ready to move up to the intermediate level? Here are some tips to help you make that leap and advance your language learning progress. Tip number one, determine your skill level. It's important to look across your skills in the major language competencies, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. By taking our level assessment test, you can review your skills in each competency and see your strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind it's normal to be better in some skills than others. Premium Plus users can take our level assessment test and get personalized recommendations and learning pathways based on your results. Once you've figured out which skills need work, it's time to take action. No matter which of your language skills need to be improved, Make sure you choose a method that's both effective and fun to help maintain your regular learning routine. Tip number two, listening. The most effective way to build your listening comprehension is by building a strong vocabulary. The more vocab you master, the easier it will be to understand the context and details of the conversation. Songs in the target language are a key listening tool that will teach you common, everyday vocabulary. By learning and memorizing the lyrics, you're building up your vocabulary. If you really want your listening skills to take off, listen to our podcasts. We have hundreds of hours of audio lessons for you to listen to. Before you know it, you'll be able to understand shows and movies. Tip number three, speaking. Add speaking elements to your language routine. Try shadowing podcasts, repeating along while you listen. Match the native speaker's pronunciation and intonation. This is a fantastic way to improve your fluency and accuracy. You can also find a partner for conversation exchange. A partner can help correct your mistakes and teach you more natural ways to phrase your ideas. Tip number four, writing. An easy way to start writing more often is by keeping a one sentence journal. Write one sentence in a journal every day. It doesn't take a lot of time and is a great habit for beginners to build a routine. You have to be consistent to make improvements. Ask native speakers to correct your writing to improve even faster. You can submit sentences and phrases to your teacher using Premium Plus. Tip number five, reading. Reading is a skill you can improve by yourself. There's no need to rush. It doesn't matter if you read one or 100 pages at a time. What matters is that you understand what you read. Write down new words as you read them to practice later. If there's an audio version, read along with the narrator. It'll help you read at a slightly faster speed than normal. You can use the audio that comes with each of our lessons. Bonus tip, never give up. Where do your language skills currently stand? Where do you want them to be? How do you get there? Whatever your goal is, make it clear and part of your life. You'll reach it if you stay focused and positive. And if you really want your skills to take off, make use of our tools and resources. They're designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. 
just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. Can you really learn a new language all alone? Learning a language without traditional classroom instruction may seem quite daunting at first. What if you run into questions? How do you stay on track and motivated to achieve your goals? Don't worry. Not only is it possible to learn any language without traditional classroom instruction, we have created an advanced and extensive online language learning system to help you do just that. It's designed to help you learn a language on your own and is faster, more convenient, and less expensive than traditional classroom options. Here are three reasons to learn a language alone. Number one, learn at your own pace and on your own schedule. In today's fast-paced world, there isn't always time for traditional classroom instruction. But when you learn alone, you can study anywhere and any time that suits your schedule best. It makes it far easier to actually reach your goal of learning and mastering the language. Number two, learning a language on your own can reduce stress and anxiety. In traditional classroom settings, there are pop quizzes, tests, and presentations in front of classmates. While it's valuable to learn public speaking skills and to be able to perform under pressure, for some people, these classroom pressures are a big hurdle for their language learning dreams. Learning alone, however, removes these stressors. Learning outside of a traditional classroom setting can help reduce some of the stress you may feel, and you can work towards your goals all on your own. Number three, learning alone can help improve cognitive function. While classroom settings often require learners to spend lots of time memorizing information and following instructions, studying a language on your own requires you to problem solve so that you can self-teach and hit your goals. You'll also need to be strict with yourself and stick to a regular study schedule. So yes, in some ways, learning a language on your own can be more challenging than learning in a traditional classroom setting. But teaching yourself a language pays dividends throughout life. In addition to learning a language, you'll also learn time management and problem-solving skills. These are skills that will aid you when social and professional opportunities arise. So, how do you actually learn a language on your own? Number one, access our huge collection of audio and video lessons. Ideally, you want audio and or video lessons that teach vocabulary, grammar, and provide actual conversations and dialogue in your target language to help you with real pronunciation. We have hundreds of hours of HD audio and video lessons on our website, created by professional teachers and actors to help you achieve perfect pronunciation. Plus, all lessons can be accessed 24-7 via any device with internet access. Number two, learning paths with courses based upon your exact needs and goals. Simply tell us your goals and we will identify the best courses and study plan to help you reach them in the shortest time possible. Even though you are technically learning a language on your own, our team is always here to help and make sure you reach your goals fast. Number three, use advanced learning tools. When you have the right tools and learning resources, it's actually easy to teach yourself a language. Over the last 10 years, we've developed, tested, and refined more than 20 advanced learning tools. These tools aim to boost retention and reduce learning time. Eliminate stress and start learning at your own pace, in bed, your car, or wherever you have a few spare minutes. Our learning resources and tools are designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. Just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. So if you want to learn language anytime, anywhere, sign up for a free lifetime account by clicking the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. 
With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Have you always wanted to learn a new language? You probably have your own reason for wanting to learn, but there are huge benefits to being bilingual that you might not know about. In this video, I'll introduce a few of them. Here are some reasons why you should learn a new language. Number one, you become smarter. Studies show that learning a new language improves your focus and memory. It improves your decision-making, you score higher on intelligence tests, and you're less likely to be swayed by propaganda. Number two, you make more friends. Because you get to communicate with more people, you can meet more people and make more friends. This will help you get more opportunities, like jobs. Number three, find love. The more people you meet, the more opportunities you have of finding that special someone. Number four, you can travel with ease. Simply because you can express yourself confidently in another language. Catching a cab, ordering food, and getting around will never be a problem. Number five, you're more open-minded and feel more empathy. Because a new language puts you in another culture's shoes. When you can speak in another language, you see the world the way that the native speakers do. In fact, when some bilinguals switch from one language to another, they also switch personalities and express themselves differently. For example, people tend to feel more direct and assertive when speaking English and more polite when speaking Japanese. So this allows you to understand others' worldviews and connect with people on a deeper level. Number six, you delay the mental effects of aging by four or five years. Learning and mastering another language sharpens your brain and increases the amount of gray matter, which helps delay dementia. So if you're ready to finally learn and master a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, Use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. 
the enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step -step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. Just click the link in the description. If you're learning a new language, there will be times when you'll struggle with the lesson, when you won't fully understand what you've learned, when you'll be in a rut, or when you just won't feel like you're making any progress. And that's totally normal. In this video, you'll learn what to do if you're not learning and how to overcome language learning struggles. Let's begin. Number one, understand the mindset of a successful learner. Some learners are more successful than others. A key difference between successful learners and less successful learners is in the way they approach problems. Some learners rely completely on a learning program. If there's a grammar rule or word they don't understand, they get frustrated and blame the program. They don't look for solutions. Successful learners approach problems a little differently. If they encounter a problem, they look for a solution or ask for help instead of getting frustrated. You may feel frustrated at times, especially if you're a beginner, but how you choose to react will make all the difference. Number two, set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. Most learners fail because they set big, vague goals, like, I want to be fluent. When they realize they have no idea how to do that, they lose motivation and quit. The solution to this? Set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. For example, finish 10 audio lessons by the end of this week. Learn 20 words by the end of this week. Speak one minute of conversation by the end of this month. Listen to lessons for just five minutes a day, every day this month. Now your goals are small and realistic enough to accomplish. They're specific and measurable, so you know when you reach them, and the deadline gives you a finish line. For example, either you learned all 20 words by Friday, or you didn't. When you reach your goal, you gain a ton of confidence. This improves your chances of reaching your next goal, because you've had experience reaching a goal, and you understand the things you need to do to be successful. Number three, read along with the lesson notes and lesson transcripts. Now, what if you're doing a lesson, but you can't catch a word? Take advantage of the lesson notes and lesson transcripts and read along with the lesson. The lesson notes give you in-depth grammar and vocabulary explanations that are not available in the lesson. And the lesson notes give you the word-for-word -word transcript of everything said in the lesson. So if you want to pick up every word, read the transcript. Number four, review because repetition is the mother of all learning. If you're struggling with a particular word, grammar rule, or lesson, be sure to repeat and review it a few times. And then, come back a few days later and review it again. This same principle is used in our spaced repetition flashcards. The system quizzes you on words, then re-quizzes you in three days, then in six days, and so on, until the word gets embedded in your long-term memory. Some things you can do right now are, Download the lesson and lesson notes. Save the words to your word bank, or even write down the words or grammar rules. Then come back to review them later. Number five, reach out to our teachers and ask questions. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can easily get in touch with your teacher and get all of your points of confusion cleared up. Or you can always leave a comment on our lessons and our teachers will get back to you. Remember, you're not alone. If you're struggling with a lesson, you can always get in touch with us. Number six, take a break and go do something else. Another thing you can do is take a break and do something else that doesn't require much thinking. There's a reason our best ideas come while in the shower or while taking a walk. While you're on a break, your brain is more relaxed and starts making connections that you couldn't see when you were focused and stressed out. It's also why coming back to review things with a fresh mind can help you better understand the lessons you've taken. Number seven, downgrade your learning routine. If you're studying for 30 minutes a day and find yourself overwhelmed, or if you suddenly find yourself busy, the best thing to do is to reduce your study routine to something easier and more manageable. If you've been learning 30 minutes a day, drop down to 10 or 15 minutes. 
even five minutes is good enough because language learning success comes with consistency. Quitting and coming back every three months won't work. This brings us to our next point. Number eight, remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Think about it. You can't cram for five hours and expect to remember everything you've studied. So just like with a marathon, it's okay to go slow and at your own pace, even if you're learning for just five minutes a day. Similarly, if you're having trouble understanding a grammar point or a lesson, don't let it bring you down. Learning a language is a marathon, a long-term game. The little points of confusion you have now are just small obstacles, and you'll fully understand them with time. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry. In this guide, you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. 1. Where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. 2 the best way to learn grammar that's right for your level, and three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. 2. How do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. 3. What if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the Grammar Bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the Grammar Bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So. If you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words eBook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Chinese eBook before it's gone.